Now, Jackie Asimu Mwesege, God Bless Mushabe. This show is being uh, relayed live um, on uh, www.kfm.co.ug. Um, if you want to follow it, you can follow it from there. If you're following us uh, via Facebook, post messages and comments and we'll pick them up. Or you can send us some of those messages on 6933. The show is brought to you by Nile Gold. There's no coffee from Ban Cafe, so I won't announce that. But there is nice popcorn uh, that's been provided by Jack in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Let me announce that. And from Ban Jackie. <laughs> from Ban Jackie. Ban Jackie. <laughs> um, uh, these questions that came in just before you took the break um, need some responses from them. Uh, no, but you had the first question. You are absent. People said you're a good orator, but you are not active. That's Tamale Alion. I I actually haven't understood the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I consider myself to be extremely active. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. Yes. Yeah. I just came back from Mitiana. We were in a grueling campaign in Jinja. Uh, I think I think many people think uh, when you are not clashing with the police, then you are not active. Mm. I, mm. I can clash with the police any time, but but uh, <laughs> as the, you know, at the time of your choosing. No, yeah. there are leaders who excel in tactics, and then there are those who excel in strategy. I think one has got to, to have a good balance of uh, both tactics and strategy. I'm I'm not. Uh, I just don't want to take Ugandans for for granted. But uh, I hear you. And uh, I'm very active where I'm supposed to be active. Uh, well, you said that before you listened to Isaac Newton Chiwanka, who says, finally you have brought Uganda's savior, Mao. Uganda <laughs> needs constitutional <laughs> action without fear or favor, uh, but these law benders, eh, our generation is to suffer. Isaac <laughs> is at, uh, telling the Kampala constitution, University. bend over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Chris Joy Mulindwa says, regarding oil, everything that Mr. Museveni is doing is for the benefit of his government and Museveni as a person. You can't continue signing agreements without the parliament. There is a lot of that in the government, and not until Museven and his corrupt friends go, Ugandan citizens will never have value for their tax money. Um, Benny Katz says, Uganda needs togetherness, not mob. Our mindset is still behind. We need to change ideology, not bodies. God, what do you say to Ben? Yeah, no, I, I think, to be honest... Uh, you, the government of Uganda, you know, we have to give credit to to our president and the government. They have tried, they, I think they tried, uh, you know, for the first 10 years of this government, uh, quite a lot was done. Uh, and I think uh, Ugandans should always uh, appreciate that and, 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 and be grateful for, for what government was able to do. But... Moving forward, and I think the problem started actually after about 1994, because um, the the quality of government was was relatively high at the peak of the service of the civil service reform program in 1992. Mm. That's when, uh, after the civil service reform, cabinet had reached the level of had reached 80. It was then cut back to 42 ministers. And there was quite a lot of cutting back, and the, the level of efficiency of government was uh, was increasing. the The level of economic activity was growing, but I think after nineteen ninety six, after nineteen ninety six, that's when I think the whole idea of regime survival stepped in. And from that time, almost every everything has been built uh, about building a pot a political patronage system that actually sustains the regime. And you see, the moment you shift into regime survival it means that all your policy actions have to be uh, have to be uh, played against your regime survival objectives so the, i think one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, 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 one of the colleagues asked about what about cabinet mm. i have been asking the same question supposing all these ministers were not in cabinet what would i lose what would my father uh, in somewhere in ntunga lose if any of these ministers were not there. There has been even debate on the media and say, oh, the, the, the ministers have resigned, the government is in a crisis. No. I mean, I think the more we see these uh, ministers resign, the better because <laughs> you, you, need a a, you need a smaller and smarter cabinet and smarter government to be able to run a country. You don't need a stadium-sized cabinet to run a country. So really, I think Ugandans need to understand that the president needs to provide and show leadership in these processes. He needs to be able to 
help government cut down on public administration expenditure. He should be the one championing cutting down on the size of parliament. Uh, so first start the with contract. the size of the budget of state yeah. house. If yes. he can't start in his own house, yeah. so, he so won't do it at the neighbor's yes. place. So, so, the, the, so, the size so of the convoy. Yes, the, the, the size of the convoy. Because Ugandans out there are paining. Yeah. Ugandans are paining. They are pregnant mothers who are going to hospitals and they can't find a midwife, they can't find medicine. They are children. They can't find electricity. Yeah. <laughs> they can't they're children yeah. who are who are who are receiving what I always call a, a, an eighteenth century education to compete in a twenty first century economy. And, and I think the, the president and the government need to feel the pain that Ugandans are going through. Can they? And That's the question. They, but we'll yeah. come back to that. Let me take some more feedback and then we'll uh, uh, we'll go into the politics, or especially of the resignations. Um, um, Nangai Robert says Uganda's problem now is Museveni overstaying in power and now has a run out of new ideas all his speeches dating way back from 1996 to date are similar I never <laughs> listened to his speeches since I already know what he says in his speeches modernization, industries, etc but no changes seen Mugambi Baker says Chairman Mao, do you think the great question of the day will be solved by speeches and discussions <laughs> in air conditioned rooms we need you to swing into action. Or oh, in, like in radio studios. <laughs> Can you respond to him? <laughs> what will solve the question of the day? I will not swing into action like Dr. Besige. I'll swing into action like Norbert Mao. Ndiwala Timothy says, the country is staggering on its way to change. It will be a matter of time. Um, uh, Ajab Johnson, Museveni said it all. We Ugandans are thieves. But remember, our leaders' habits will influence followers. Since he's a Ugandan. <laughs> so I think we all know where the oil theft started from. Francis Okello says, Mao, you are a great man, but however oil sector has been implemented out, how will you help us who have good papers but knows no one? Because the current government employ basing on who they know. Please, save young generation of Ugandans. Mm -hmm. Are you going to help? <laughs> Francis Kasozi Shogi says, Chairman Mao can't agree with you more on these issues. Where in the world is our oil going? And how in the world will I benefit from the would-be curse? What a bunch of jokers in parliament. And Asimwe Amos Patrick says, benefit from oil making all work, workforce to come from Uganda. That's when Ugandans can be in control. Algeria has done it. I'd like us to move the discussion to the question of these resignations. They resigned over a completely different matter. There are those other ministers, three of them, who said they stepped aside, whatever that means, um, over another corruption allegation. But in a cabinet of 73, it's difficult, even for the chairman of that cabinet, to notice that some people are missing, unless if they are extremely <laughs> yeah, sure. to the discussion. Yeah. Like a UPE class. <laughs> yes. it's, uh, <laughs> it's only an extremely stubborn child that you miss and say, where is this child? They don't seem to be... Yeah. I think Kaindo Tafire always can be noticed. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chairman Mao, let me start with you. The ministers have resigned. You have 10 empty slots in cabinets today. The four who are not approved, the three who stepped aside, and the three who have resigned. Um, Kawakumba Masiko, Saida Bomba, Kidu Makoya. Uh, six, six resignations and four unappointed. The question is, how does this impact? How does... Uh, there is a lady I always refer to. She sells granuts and sometimes uh, sweet bananas just right here in front of the monitor, the daily monitor. There are those women walking down by the railway, walking all the way back to Luzira or wherever they come from. These uh, resignations, realignment of cabinet, demands that government is more accountable, more open, and um, more responsive to people's needs. How does it affect them? Personally, I, I've been arguing countless times that the problem in Uganda is systemic, but the system is embodied by one man. So actually, removing Museveni is now a clear goal. Getting him out of that position. It is a goal that we have got to declare as Ugandans and say, you know, forget about the constitution, mm -hmm. forget about what, get rid of this man who is the personification of corruption and everything which is delaying us on our Are path. you also saying the constitution is a stumbling block? No, it no, is no, not no, a no, stumbling no. block. No. I'm saying everything else. Now, because we, there are those who argue and say, you know, we must sort out the system Mm. Now, the system is the same as the person in this case. So, 
it does not matter how many people resign. I agree totally with, with Godba that, you know, many people actually don't know what <laughs> Saida Bumba is. <laughs> no, not at all. I did, not that I didn't say who she is, what, <laughs> what Saida Bumba is. Yeah. Hmm? Many people don't know uh, or, or what the minister for general duties yeah uh, they, you know, they, they may I, think I, Kidu, I, Ma, Kidu Makubuya uh, is uh, some company you know yeah. mm. I hear uh, in Uganda minister for general duties is called minister Kolaja Sanga <laughs> <laughs> and, and, what is the, and what is the minister for, without portfolio <laughs> <laughs> minister China <we> are <laughs> so Yet. I, I, I believe yeah. hmm. that really sometimes a person can personify the evils that are bedeviling a nation. And in this case, we have got to admit that really, if President Museveni was sold, then he has lost guiltiness. And as the Bible decrees, mm. it <laughs> now it is fit out, to be yeah. dumped. Mm. If he was a light, then he has been snuffed out. Now, I personally agree with those who say, the, and, and Jackie raised this, because governance is not just about coming to KFM. How many members of parliament have even held a town hall meeting to educate their people? You know, as a member of parliament, I was famous for my many rallies on Kaunda ground. Now, Kaunda ground is like Kololo airstrip. Mm -hmm. It is the most intimidating <laughs> open ground probably in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Not many people can dare to call a rally there. Because you may not feel it and it will look uh, funny. Well, uh, uh, only the Pope and Joyce Meyer probably dared to feel it and then in the recent presidential election I probably outnumbered them. But it is not about numbers. A leader should step in front of his people mm -hmm. and say, by the way, this is how it has been done in Ghana. This is how it has been done. And, and you bring people to your level. Because right now, we, we are talking about, you, you are talking about uh, these, these agreements. I mean, we need to put a kind of step down transformer to step down the voltage of this concentrated knowledge about these difficult issues now we as the drivers when i go into a rally i must be able to distill this information assuming i'm standing before a crowd in katwe i must be able to say first and foremost this is god's gift to uganda and the ugandan state as we were discussing in the break, is a colonial contraption. Actually, the reason why the communities don't seem to be working well with the state is because the, sna the, st the state is grafted. It's imposing on, itself on Yeah, them. it is grafted. You know, if they cut a piece of my skin and try to impose it on you, it will, it will take time. It is, it is almost like a, an, an, an abnormal growth. So that is why. What Angelo said is, is on the mark. We are going to be staggering until we find some kind of equilibrium. Okay. We need to take a commercial break and then I'll pick it with Jackie and um, Godburn, of course, Angelo, after the short break. It's live. It's hot. It's provocative. And digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's Hot Seat in association with Nile Gold, a crystal malt lager beyond an oil.